Hello everyone, this is Constance from Mysterious Galaxy. Thank you so very, very much for joining us tonight. Tonight we have a very, very special event for you. We are getting to celebrate a book birthday, so a very large round of applause. We are getting to celebrate the book birthday for the Gilded Ones by Namina Forna, and she is going to be in conversation with Kim Whitley, who is also the author of The Delusion of Cinderella. And I am so excited because we have such a great YA fantasy fan base for our store. So I know for myself as well as for many others, this is like, oh, this is the stuff that we love. And it just has all of the elements that make us like want to scream and happy dance when we see a book come out. So before I pass it off, I'm just going to give you a little introduction to our guests tonight. And we have Namina Forna, who has an MFA in film and TV production from USC School of Cinematic Arts and a BA from Spelman College. She works as a screenwriter in LA and loves telling stories with fierce female leads, which is just chef's kiss, best thing ever. And then we have Kim Whitley is one of those rare individuals to whom the phrase Renaissance woman might be applied. These days, most people know her either from her frequent appearances on Larry David's groundbreaking HBO series, Curb Your Enthusiasm, or from the Tom Joyner Morning Show, a nationally syndicated radio program. So super big round of applause. I'm so excited to have both of you joining us. And just to tell you a little bit about The Gilded Ones, it is an amazing fantasy about a girl whose blood is gold instead of red, which you would think would make her even more special, but in this world, actually, it's not necessarily the best thing. But you do find out that that gold blood actually means she has some very special talents and gifts. And you'll get to hear more about that, but I'm not going to give you any spoilers. And I'm going to pass it off to Kim, so make sure everyone, you know where the chat section is. If you have a question, ask down below. And of course, if you want to buy the book and celebrate the amazing book birthday of the Gilded Ones, make sure you hit that buy book and personalized book page book plate button down below. Now, Kim, I'm going to pass it off to you. Everyone have an amazing vet, and I will see you at the end. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, hey, everyone. Hi, everyone. We are so excited. Welcome to the Gilded Ones event book. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. However many years in the making. <laughs> okay, really? Well, we should just jump right into it. Everyone, of course, she's been introduced, but... Namina Forna is, of course, the author of The Gilded Ones. Um, oh, I got shivers when you say that. The yeah, author. the author, author, yes. Beautiful book uh, that is climbing the charts. Uh, of course, I'm Kim Whitley, actress, comedian, and I- Fabulous person, extraordinaire. You, you see that. But I am so excited about this young lady that I wanted to be the one. I wanted to be with her on her book release. I want to be a part of her life. I want to be a part of her journey because this book is incredible. Her talent is incredible. Let everyone, I know you, but let everyone who's watching uh, tell them who, who is Namina Um Do I get to speak of myself in third person? <laughs> well, let's do it, let's do it. Okay, so, so. Namna Forna is a third culture, okay? So I was born and raised in Sierra Leone, West Africa, came here when I was nine. So I am I am literally African American, right? So For real, African. you can really say that. You're African -American. I'm literally African American. Um, I went to Spelman College, AUC Love, all the way, um, and USC School of Cinematic Arts. I love fantasy and fantastical worlds. If there is a fantastical world, I am there. I love strong female characters. I love also um, creating characters that are sort of not what people think about, you know? Because like I've had the world of the Gilded Ones in me for a long time, for like way before like all this, Afro, like everyone's like all about Afrofuturism. I was Afrofuturism from day one, because again, I am African um, and I am just um, a whimsical person who like really enjoys fantasy, and I and I welcome you guys to my world. Wow. Well, okay. When you say that, can you explain when you say fantasy? Mm -hmm. What is that uh, when it pertains to your writing in this particular book? So for me, fantasy is like anything that is um, well, not the not the real world, and anything where there is magic, like mm -hmm. deeply ingrained. Because like 
there's other things like magical realism where it's the real world but with a sprinkling mm -hmm. but like fantasy is when you remove from the real world and you set yourself into a world that exists in the imagination and that's what i do i create worlds of the imagination wow that sounds great so let's I, I, that is very interesting to me because this book you say is for the young at heart How, what age group I would say 13 plus because it is for the young at heart, but it's also quite violent. I want to just um, right ahead, mm -hmm. like put all our trigger warnings. This is a violent book. And also, by the way, I almost forgot to say that we both have had COVID tests and stuff. So all that's right. why we can all sit together like this because yeah. so don't worry we planned about, this. Yeah, don't worry. Speed, but we've been COVID testing before this event. We've been planning it. So uh, uh, we're ready for it. Um, I am very excited about your book. Um, when you say it was with you for years, how long did it take you to write this book? Okay, so that's sort of a difficult question because mm -hmm. um, when I say it was with me for years, when I when I was at Spelman College, when I was like, I think I was a sophomore at Spelman, undergrad, and like I started having these dreams of um, a black girl in golden armor and she was like sort of walking slow motion. You remember the movie 300? Okay. So yes, she was like yes. walking like slow motion 300, <laughs> I like, that like up a hill and there was like a battlefield below. And she like jumps up in the air, two, like one sword in each hand, and the dream cuts up. And I, and I never knew what happened then, but I was like, you know what? This girl is interesting. I want to know more about her. Years later, um, I'm at USC, I'm sitting in class, bored out of my mind, mm -hmm. and I get like, and the words drop into my head. I was nine years old when first I learned I could not die. And that was the first iteration of The Gilded One. So I was like 25, 25 at the time, and I like wrote this book in like, I think it was a year, and then I sent it out and nothing, oh. nothing. Because like back then, like, you know, the whole idea was that black people don't sell books, mm -hmm. um, and especially not black girls on the cover. So I was like, okay, put this aside. Maybe, you know, I, I was in love with this book, but maybe it's not the one. Years later, uh, I like, I sort of see the promos for Black Panther coming and I see the, the attention that it's receiving online. So I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think now is the time. Mm -hmm. So I, I email my agent. I'm like, hey, I have this idea for a book. It needs a page one rewrite because back when I wrote it, you know, it was a different time. Things had changed. And mm -hmm. also when I first wrote it, like Deka was like, um, she was nine years old. Right. <laughs> you know, so I was like, that's not going to like, so I was like, okay, um, I need a page one rewrite, meaning I need to throw away everything that I have. And she's like, how fast can you write it? I'm like, give me two months. I write it in a month and a half. Like I was literally waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning, 3 a.m. Because I had a full-time job, you know? But like, I was just like, this is what I want to do. I so believe in this world. I think the time is, nine, is now. So I just wrote it from scratch. And that, and like literally, um, we went out March 1st mm -hmm. and we sold March 1st. What? Yeah. Of, although I will say my agent had sent it out like two days earlier because mm -hmm. she seen me doing rewrites and she was just like, oh, she's doing too much now. So she sent it out two days earlier. And then on March 1st, when we go out, that's when we get an offer. And it was so amazing because it was like, it was just like, I cried because at that point I'd sort of given up and, but there it was. Right there. Now that that's a fantastic story. Because like you say, I don't know if uh, black books, but on and on and that black girl on the cover, black story, you're a young black woman. Um, because you, you know, you get turned away so many times and doors are closed. Um, what made you the title? What, what is the Gilded Ones? Why, why that title? We originally had a different title. The original title was Deathless because in the book, um, so basically I almost forgot to say the book is about a group of girls. Um, it's in the uh, fantasy, African based fantasy world. And it's about a group of girls who are are thought of as demons because they're faster and stronger than regular people and each has only one way they can die sort of like an achilles heel and also they bleed gold mm -hmm. so because of all these things people are like they're demons you see one figure out how it dies and then kill it then actual demons come into this world mm -hmm. and people are like wait we need these girls to fight the demons mm -hmm. and so they offer the girls a choice fight or die mm -hmm. and my main character chooses to fight so the gilded ones um originally was deathless because you know these girls 
for many of them, you can kill them however many times you like, they'll keep coming back. But I felt that the Gilded Ones was, and um, my editors and all these felt that it was a better title because it reflects the fact that here are these girls who keep shining, who are golden, despite everything that happens to them. And that is where this, that is where the name comes from. Because we were like shooting made back and forth. We were like, okay, how do we, because like Deathless is maybe a bit too macabre, like, and so what is the name? And I was just like, you know, they're golden, they're gilded. And somebody was like, oh my gosh, that's it. And I was like, the gilded ones are going to use that. I yeah. absolutely love that name. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know how you grew up. Mm -hmm. um, it, do you mind sharing a, a little piece of, of how you grew up, um, what we already talked about, where you're from, and just how, you know, uh, you know as, well, I guess even in the book, how it kind of, you, you both cross into these worlds of your real life and in the Gilded Ones. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure thing. So I grew up in Sierra Leone, um, which is on the west coast of Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and I grew up um, during the beginning of the decade long civil war. And this was a really horrific time. It was also like, and I was really young at the time. So people like things were happening, but people will be like, okay, you know, it's not really happening. There was this sort of, I feel like we were almost gaslighting ourselves because we did not believe that a war was coming towards us, right? And it was only like when we had like a coup and all these things that people were like, oh my gosh, this is real. So I grew up in a time where everything was like really tense and I was always very scared. So what I do is I read, um, I would read a lot of fantasy because for me, fantasy was a way to escape from the reality of life and the, the things that I was sort of seeing out of the corner of my eye. Um, but like when the war came full force, it was like this, the atrocities that we saw during the Sierra Leonean War, a uh, civil war were horrific. But the things that we saw happen to women, like it, 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 like, you know, like I was a kid, I couldn't understand that, you know? But I think like all of those things, plus growing up in like, and even before the war Sierra Leone and even after the war Sierra Leone is extremely patriarchal. And then I like go to Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, which is a different type of patriarchy. It's mm -hmm. nicer. Um, it's more polite, but it's still sort of elements of the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so like I was seeing all of these things and I was like, huh, I don't think this is okay. And it was only like when I went to Spelman and like in Spelman, like you're required to take certain classes, right? Mm -hmm. So you take African diaspora of the world, which examines, um, which examines sort of the history of people in the African diaspora. And you also take classes on feminism and all these things. And that was sort of like an opening of my mind because there were all these questions and these things that I'd always had, but that I had never understood until like I, like I had all these classes at Spelman. And then I was like, oh, this is all the stuff that I have been dealing with and countering and all these things. And this is what it is. This is the actual explanation. And I really do think that like being at Spelman was such a formative experience. And that was really, I think, what, you know, became the Gilded Ones, because that's when I started having that dream and all these things. Because like even in the book, you know, the Watibera, like the school where these girls go to learn to be warriors, that's Spelman. It is, oh, wow. it's, it's a, it's a <laughs> messed cool. up version of Spelman. Mm -hmm. I promise y'all, Spelman does not like, you know, do awful things to your own. Oh, I they like, it, I but, that. but it's, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. that it came from that point in my life where mm -hmm. I was like, where finally I had a space and a safety to examine things. And I also mm -hmm. had all these strong black women and women of color who were there to hold me as I went on this journey of sort of expanding my mind and trying to ex understand things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you hope uh, that people that read this book will walk away with? I think for me, the thing that I hope is that people will understand that only you get to define who you are. Because I think that in this world, there are always boxes that everybody falls into. And especially if you're black, if you're female, if you're brown, if you're queer, if you are anything that is not sort of cisgendered white male, like and even cisgendered white male, like everybody has their boxes and people sort of try to enforce that. 
And that may not necessarily reflect you as a person. And in trying to fit into those boxes, you might actually um, harm yourself and other people might harm you and trying to squeeze you into all of these things. And so I think for me, that's sort of the thing behind this book is like, really look at yourself and determine who you are. Don't let the messages that everybody else is sort of like trying to tell you be who you are. Because in this book, these girls are told that they are demons by virtue of the fact that they do all of these things that are not considered womanly or feminine in this world. But does that mean that they're actually demons, you know? So that's, that's you know, claim who you are, determine who you are. You get to say who you are, not anybody else. And that is the message I think of the Gilded Ones. Wow, I love this. I want everyone, while we're talking, there is a button uh, below uh, to, if you want to buy this book right now, because uh, it's it's something to get. It's definitely a book to get. It's uh, uh, my, uh, mysteries. Uh, I'm messing up. Mysterious Thank galaxy. Thank you. Mysterious galaxy uh, bookstore, but there is a button below uh, to uh, get the book. Um, I, I have started reading the book. I didn't finish reading the book, but it sucks you into this world that. It, 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 for me, when I'm reading this book, I'm like, how can she be a first time author? Like, were you writing as a child? Like, to, to be able to keep an audience when you read a book, like it's a page turner. Like, did you know that you had the ability to write a story to make people continue to read the next page and the next page? And there's like a love story in there. And there's all these things that make you grab as a first time writer. I guess I'm just curious, how did you know that you could do that? Because I've been doing it for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the thing, like I decided to become a writer in undergrad. I decided to become a writer at Spelman, mm -hmm. right? I started writing at Spelman and I started querying meaning like sending out a, like books for agents to say, hey, I will represent you. Mm -hmm. But when I was trying the industry was such that there was no way I was getting through. Mm -hmm. Like the sad thing was like, as a young black girl, mm -hmm. there was no space for me in the industry. And people would literally say that to my face. It didn't matter how talented I was. It didn't matter that I had worlds in my head. It didn't, all of these things did not matter because I did not fit into what was the expected, what was the expectation mm -hmm. of an author in those time, in that time. Thankfully times have changed. Mm -hmm. But I saw this to say that you know, people are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing for a, um, for, for a debut novel. But yeah, because I've been writing for like a decade, you know, it's only now I'm getting let in and only now that other black women and other brown women and other queer people, like, and all these people, like for so long, the doors have been shut against us and now we're finally getting in. So I'm excited. I love that people are like, oh my gosh, you're such a great writer. I'm like, yes, I am because... I have been writing for a decade and I have been, you know, being very disciplined about it, even despite the rejections. And imagine mm. if there were over 12 years of rejections, wow. you know. Really? 12 years? So, so what you're saying is this is not an overnight success. This is not an, no, I, no, I will claim it. It's an overnight success. Let's say like okay. that. It is an overnight success. Like yeah. I need all y'all to be like, she's fabulous. It's an overnight success. She just came with this. <laughs> right, right. You've been putting, you've been putting the time in. Yeah. Well, I have other questions, but I know we have other people that want to ask questions. Um, you know, but if you want to, is there anything else that you want to talk about the book? I don't, you know, I, don't, I know you don't want to give away a lot about the book. Um, but, oh, well, there's so many things I want to ask. First of all, about the cover. Yes. So, the illustrator, Tara Josu, like y'all all need to follow this man, T-A-R-A. -A, Look at me. Second name, second word, J-O-S-U. He is amazing. I mean, look at this, right? No, it's amazing. Like, it's amazing. And I just, what I love about this cover is that, you know, when I thought of the cover of this book, I thought of something dark and sort of ominous because, like, it's so kick-ass and all of these things. But then my editor was like, hey, I know this artist. He is going to do the cover justice. And I was like, yeah, okay, fine, fine, fine. She shows me this cover and I am like blown away because here is a young, and, and this is the thing is like, in all of the ways that I'd imagined this, I'd forgotten the fact that these are teenagers. These are young girls 
who all these awful things are happening to mm -hmm. and that who are having to fight against these patriarchal systems, all of these mm -hmm. systems. And so with this cover, I love it because she looks like she could be my cousin. She yes. looks like she could be a member of my family. And I really do see what it means when you say, oh, this is a 16 year old girl that's going like that all this stuff is happening to and that is combating all of this. Well, and how, that's how many did you go through? How many covers or choices did you go through? We went through one cover before and that sadly didn't work out. But this is one. Yeah. What, one cover before this, because there's there might be multiple covers, like for your favorite books, there might be multiple covers. But this one was the one that it was absolutely perfect. Like I literally was just like I was sort of I, I, I'm just in love with this cover. Oh, I, I love it. Yeah. It makes you want to read the book. Yeah. I know that sounds crazy. Like yeah. I have a certain coffee cup. Mm -hmm. Like it makes me want to drink my coffee. Mm -hmm. But this book, because when you walk into a bookstore, if we ever get to walk into another one, or you pull up a book online, there's so many books. But this book would draw my eye to it immediately just because of what is this book what is it saying the colors this beautiful african child i would want and then the name of the book and then the author's name is different i'm like <laughs> yeah. but you would go up there and say Nami. that's not people Kim. always are like Jane. naima right it's not Nimini. does your name mean anything so all right don't quote me okay but so my tribe in Sierra Leone are the Timneys. And to my understanding, the name Amina is either a wife or daughter of Prophet Muhammad. I'm not sure. So my tribe were like, oh, that's a cool name. Let's change it to make it more appropriate. So it's either Namina for female mm -hmm. or Lamina for male. So they literally tacked on two, two, um, two letters to the name. Because they were like, ah, 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 ah. This is not, this is not Timney. Mm -hmm. like, let's do, you know? And oh. so that's where my name comes from. It's actually super country. It like it's like their grandmother's name. But everyone's always like, no, no, that's such a cute name. I'm like, yes, it is. is. Because y'all don't but, know that it's like anime. Right, like over here, we <laughs> anime Bertha. That is hilarious. Yeah. So beautiful, so regal. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's like anime. <laughs> anime. Not, not. I love it. I love it. Now, where can people follow you on uh, your social media? Just to put that out there. I am on Twitter primarily at Namna Forna. At Namna Forna. I am on Instagram at namina.forna, and I you can find me on my um, website at namina.forna.com. Oh my so, God. So yeah, well, I'm that, pretty responsive. Was, responsive. Yeah. Well, you're pretty responsive. Good, good, yeah. because that is very important. And before we get into the questions, your dress is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yes. yes. show, oh, show wait, the people. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, no, wait, let me stand up. Yeah, stand let up. Let me stand up so y'all can, yep, sure can see. Yeah, they can see that. So y'all can see. I have yes. <laughs> show, show the world. Okay. So Beautiful. this was made um, in Sierra Leone. Um, I have a tailor in Sierra Leone who made this and like literally they like I had somebody like fly it out um, to bring it to me because African clothing forever, African fashion forever, like Absolutely. they just did an amazing job. And I don't know if you guys saw my British launch or saw the pictures from that, but that was also the same tailor. Mm -hmm. um yes when you so you had a british a british launch that was last book. week yes last week because oh. my book is international now it's, international baby isn't that fancy i can't get mine out of los angeles she said her british launch i love it i love it so we have questions yet yes. uh siobhan could you tell us one of the questions please first question is from roseanne there's been a lot of talk about the publishing industry's obsession with black pain narratives how do you handle incorporating pain into your work while also balancing the very real need for black joy. So I hope Ooh. everyone heard that question because she has on a mask. Now she's been COVID tested and vaccinated and she's still sitting there with a mask on, I love it. So did you understand the question? That, that was an excellent question and yes. I'm trying to frame my thoughts. All right, mm -hmm. so I think that for me, because we live in the world that we live in, we do have to like, acknowledge the reality of being a black person in this world mm -hmm. but for me this book was about the reality of being a woman in this world mm -hmm. and so that was the focus that i had in this book was uh this is a feminist book i wanted to 
examine the patriarchy and I wanted to like show it in a way that like this is the book that I wanted as a as a um, teenager to like mm -hmm. sort of explicitly explain the way that patriarchy pat patriarchal societies um, function who benefits who doesn't so that was sort of where I came from I did acknowledge a little bit of what it means because for me um, coming from Africa to America was a painful process. You know, I think like a lot of times people have this whole idea of Africa being like the dreads and all of these things. But like when I came, I missed, I missed Sierra Leone. I missed being home because there I was surrounded and affirmed by the people around me. And, you know, I granted there was a war and all of these things, but I was surrounded and I, I was affirmed. And then when I came here, mm -hmm. I had to deal with things that were outside of my realm of understanding that I had to slowly sort of um, build up to. So I acknowledge it a little bit, but I did want to focus on what it meant to be a woman. But more importantly, I wanted to focus on the joy of sisterhood, because I think that like for, I think that a lot of times when we have um, books about women or media about women, it's usually they're catty, they're against each other, but that's not what it is in my book. In my book, the women are a team. They are moving together uh, to make lives, to make life better for themselves. And I wanted to focus on that, the joy of sisterhood, the joy of being in communion with other women. Um, and so that is where the joy in my book comes out. And granted, there is pain because there is like all this stuff happening because they are women. But I focus on the joy and the hope. Fantastic. That was a good question and a great answer. Uh, next question. Next question is from Dion. Namina, can you tell us something about the names of your characters, the meanings and which, if any, are Sierra Leone, what other Sierra Leone words do you incorporate? All right, so when I created this book, um, I so the language is based on Timni, which is my native tribe, because in Sierra Leone, we have many different tribes, right? Because, and this of course goes back to colonization, because when the British or whomever came in, they carved, um, they carved just arbitrary spaces in different kingdoms, and they were like, voila, we all are now one country, which is why, of course, Africa um, different African countries keep having civil wars and such mm -hmm. because you have all these different kingdoms now together being told that they are, um, that they are being one country. But my tribe um, is the indigenous tribe of Sierra Leone. We are the Timni tribe. And so I use that as a ba basis uh, for, for the book, right? So like words like the Watibera. Watibera literally means woman in Timni. So I use that. Mm -hmm. Or like the word alaki. I'm not actually sure of the origin of Alaki because Alaki is a, okay, so well, I, I, I see that like, all right. So here's the thing in Sierra Leone, we have Creole uh, is our, is our uh, language that everybody uses to communicate because every different tribe has their different language, right? right? So if you're Mende, if you're Timmy, if you're mm -hmm. Soso, if you're Fulani or whatever, everybody communicates through, t through um, Creole. Alaki is a Creole world word, but I suspect it comes from Arabic. But like everybody uses it. And and Araki, Alaki is the word that I use for the girls in my book, the super powered mm -hmm. girls. They're called Alaki. And literally in Creole, Alaki means useless or unwanted. Okay. And um, you can either use it in anger or you can use it jokingly, like, look this Alaki posinia, or no mix me by your Alaki business. So you know, like you you use it that way. Um but again, was that English? No, that was not English. Okay, I was like, what in the world? That Say that again. That sounded so nice. Say I was like, no, me me pal, you alaki business or, or look this alaki tiaso, right? So we use that word like either jokingly or in anger. Mm -hmm. And so alaki, like, and so when I heard that word, I was like, oh, the perfect word to describe these girls who are unwanted, mm -hmm. alaki, you know? So again, it is a Creole word but the actual origin, I'm not sure. Um, no, you're Creole. When you say Creole word, it's not like the Creole New Orleans. No, no, no. So Creole, K-R-I-O, mm -hmm. is Pigeon English, right? So, and Pigeon English is like a mix of English, archaic English and African, and different African languages. Did you say Pigeon? Pid 
Yes, oh, that is. Okay, I was that, like, like that, the bird? Pigeon, like, yes, yes, okay. yes, that's what, that's what it's called. So like, even with the, um, like, Haitian Creole and oh. the Louisiana Creole, right. that would could be considered a pigeon language. I love it. Yeah. Pigeon, that's what you learn to spell. And what, not a, a pigeon, I speak um, bluebird. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's the next question? Namina, which character was the most challenging to write? Ooh, that is a diff difficult question. Um, I think two characters, um, Deka and Belcalis. And like, so I'll start with Belcalis. So basically, a lot of times when people say they wrote a book, they're like, oh, this is the book of my heart. I'm like, no, 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 no. The Gilded Ones is the book of my rage, right? Because it is the book that I wrote because I was angry about all the things that I've experienced about what it meant to be a woman and understanding that people view you as inferior and all these things. So it is literally book I, a book I wrote because I was angry and I was frustrated. And Belcalis like embodies that rage and that frustration. And that is why it was so difficult to write her. A lot of times when I wrote her scenes, especially the most pivotal, pivotal scenes mm -hmm. with her, it was so like, I would have to it would take me like a week to write that scene because I'd have to step away and come back because it was so emotionally taxing and heavy. Deka was also difficult to write because initially when I was younger and I wrote Deka, like, and this is the difference between the first version and this version was, mm -hmm. um, you know, she was like a Buffy-like character. She came out the womb fully formed, fighting the patriarchy and all these things. But then when I started writing this version, I was like, really think about it. If this is a girl who lives in a world that is patriarchal, is she going to be like this or is she going to believe? Is she going to be obedient? Mm -hmm. um, and that and that for me was sort of the way that I thought about things. So when I wrote Deka, I wrote someone who was obedient, who believed and who um, went like who embodied all of these things. And so it was difficult for me because when she is betrayed by all of her beliefs mm -hmm. and she is in fact brutalized by her beliefs, mm -hmm. she then has PTSD. And that's something that for me, because of growing up in the way that I did, that's something that I have suffered from. Mm -hmm. And so I've had to like sort of understand that. And like riding Deka, it was it was really, really, really sort of difficult. Okay. Yeah. Well, fantastic. I, I, was there ever a time that you wa had to walk away? Like, just completely, was there, well, not, not, I know there was a time, but how long, were there any really long periods of time that you walked away from the book while writing it? Um, so, um, the times that I walked away, um, the longest that I walked away from the book is like probably like maybe two days because the longest that I walked away from the book was maybe two days because like it like I was at the point that I was rewriting this book I hated my day job I could not take another day and I just I wanted so desperately to be a writer you know at this point I had gone through the artistic struggle you know I was poor I was couch surfing I was doing all these things and I just this was my dream and I wanted it so badly. So I was just like, this is my one chance and I'm going to write it as fast as I can. And I was like, I have given myself the deadline of by March. So I'm going to hit this deadline no matter what, no matter what it takes me. So like the most I walk away is two days. And even that's an exaggeration because even when a scene was difficult for me, I'd go on to the next scene and then come back. But, but even speaking about that, the book was supposed to come out last year yeah now wh what happened why didn't it come out in 2020 um because of covid <laughs> uh i remember it was like it was february i was you know that's like i think like the three three month out thingy mm -hmm. and i was all getting ready and then it's like oh there's a pandemic coming and we were like oh it's gonna be over in two weeks yeah, and then it wasn't here we are and here we are i think it was good that you that you waited is everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Uh, Siobhan, do we have another question? Mm -hmm. How expansive did you make the infinite wisdoms? Wow, that is a good question. Um, so oh, the, that's a great question. Honey, like, I can answer that one. I was like, wait, hold up. I was like, wow, 
I need a dictionary for all those yeah. words. Yeah. All right. So for everybody who doesn't know, the Infinite Wisdoms is basically the Bible of this world, right? So it is a series of scrolls that um, sort of lays down all the expectations of what a person should be. So it lays down the expectations for women, for men, for peace, for every everybody has their prescribed role in this mm -hmm. world. Now, I know the arc of what the infinite wisdom says. Do I know the specificity? No, we're gonna wing it. <laughs> I'm not gonna wing it. But like, I know that like, I know the thing, the general terms of what he would say. And I know that the infinite wisdom has the history of Oterra, which is my world, um, as it is supposed to be. Um, and then of course, what it prescribes for everyone who lives in Oterra. Wow, so y'all gonna have to read that. You know, first of all, let me um, ask you a question to go back to um, your struggles. Are you a writer now? Like, are you still sit sleeping on the couch, couch jumping, or are you an author now that you can say, this is what I do. This was my dream, and this is what I do. Yeah. Are you successful now? Have you? You know, I have to say, I am so grateful, I am so happy, I am an author. Wow. I am an author. And, and, and like, it is so powerful to claim those worlds because like, y'all don't understand. Like, there was a time when I thought there was no possibility for me. Like, literally there was time where it's like, I have to change my name just for people to even like take a look because like, the first thing they see is they see the name Navana and they're like, oh no, this person, you know, like this person is obviously not white. Therefore there's no, you know, and like that, <laughs> um, yeah, that, yeah, that was, that was I, I feel you. Yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that. I have a girlfriend who I want to cry. Like, like, that's why I was like, I was like, yeah, you took a moment, and I and I say, I feel your pain because you know, me having yes. a dream. I have a girlfriend, uh, C. Mickey, you would call, but she is a fantastic writer. Her dream <clears throat> is to be a writer and an author and the screenplays and all that. And so when you say that, she talks to me about like, she just wants that. And when I see that, it's almost like this is giving you your freedom. Yes. I have always had worlds um, inside of me, but for years, for, for over a decade really, people would never see those worlds because I wasn't what was, um, expected you know oh girl don't mess up Ooh. your makeup jesus jesus Ooh. we're here um because i wasn't what was expected you know and i wasn't what was wanted and i am so grateful like right now i actually want to speak some names i am so grateful to people like jordan field for get up um you know i am so grateful for black panther I'm so grateful to Angie Thomas. I am so grateful to Danielle Clayton. Danielle, if you're here, The Bells, the book, The Bells, y'all get that book. I am so grateful to Nick Stone, you know, dear Martin. These are the people who like, I am so, and, and before that, I am so grateful to people like Toni Morrison, Octavia Butler, yes. let us speak there. Ooh, I am okay. so grateful. I am so grateful to all these people who carved their path because they made it possible for me to see that it was possible for me as well. Because for so many years, I didn't think it was possible. And I would sit, you know, and I would sit and I would be like, I have these worlds and I wanna, and I wanna, you know, I wanna, get, like, I want to share them, yeah. but nobody wants to, nobody is opening the door for me. No matter how hard I'm knocking, nobody wants to see me. And so mm -hmm. like now I am grateful that times have changed. I am grateful that now there's an entire cohort of black women and brown women and queer people and gender diverse people who are writing books and who are opening worlds that for so long, so many of us, we never saw ourselves in the book, in the books. Like it took me till age 31 to see myself in a book. But now, you know, I think of like all the little African girls who will look and read my book and will see the name Fatu and be like, my name is Fatu. Cause to this day, I still haven't seen my name in a book. And I doubt that I ever will uh, actually, if you are, writer mm -hmm. and you're in this thingy mm -hmm. please write my name into your book and let me know because i will shout your name to the heavens please yeah yes <laughs> please write my name because i want to see my name in a book you know and maybe i should write it myself but i'm not going to do that i am going to wait for you to write my name please <laughs> write my name in your book 
you know, give me space. That is what I'm waiting for. Wow. Yeah. Well said. That was, uh, that was powerful. Um, just to hear your passion about that. Right now, everyone, I just want you to go click on that button. I know we're not supposed to do that, but I want y'all to click on that button and buy this book. Um, if, you, if you're not going to read it, buy it for someone. Um, this book right here, The Gilded Ones, uh, we're going to hear her name for a long time to come. Uh, she has many worlds to write about. Uh, Namana, uh, right here, Namana Porna, The Gilded Ones. I want you all to go and get this book right now because I want her to see that she makes a difference. We're going to sell this book out. It's going to be a number one. It's going to be a bestseller. Um, everyone talk about this book. Um, I think, I don't know if we have time for one more question. We're going to wrap it up. Um, uh, this will be our last question. Uh, and then we're going to close it out uh, for the night. Um, one good last question. How do you view writing immortal, near immortal characters to, into making them compelling compared to mortal characters? Oh, wow. That's an excellent question. Cool. You guys are coming with a question. Yes, that's a good question. All right. So I, I completely understand this question because when you're immortal, you can't die. That means you don't fear death, right? That's why I do two things in the book. Number one is I call these girls conditionally mortal, right? Mm -hmm. Which And the condition is that everybody has their one death like an Achilles heel. So like, right, so maybe this girl, the only way you kill her is you cut off her pinky finger mm -hmm. and you could do whatever else you want, but until you cut off her pinky finger, she's not gonna die. That is conditional immortality. That being said, just because they're immortal does not mean that they do not suffer, that they do not suffer, right? That they don't feel pain, that they don't feel terror or whatever. And so like, for me, that's why Deka is such a compelling character because here is a person who is conditionally immortal, but because she um because she feels pain because she has been through trauma she is always doubting herself and she's struggling because of all the things that have happened to her and that is how you craft an immortal character mm -hmm. a character who has to feel things they could feel things um oh, wow. yeah so that's it absolutely wonderful thank you so much uh, uh everyone <laughs> For joining, for joining us, us. Uh, thank you for the Mysterious, mysterious Galaxy Store. Galaxy store. Uh, you can get the uh, book, get the uh, book there, uh, there. You can uh, all over, all over the, the world. The world. Or or so, or so. I follow her on uh, uh, social media. Social media. Um, um, thank you. Thank I know you. I know Constance would like to come in and wrap it up for us. Hello everyone. Thank you so much, Kim. You are beyond phenomenal moderator. And thank you so much, Namuna, for sharing your book birthday with us and for celebrating the Gilded Ones with us. And both of you truly do, like look amazingly phenomenal and fantastic. Like all of the comments were going off about just like the beautifulness of your dress too. So I want to say thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you so much for all of the amazing questions. There was one other question, Namna, that I saw. It was about the culture of masks, and I thought yes. that was a yes. really good one. Could they find more information on your Twitter, Instagram? Is there any place um, they can find um, more about I, that? I, I, I can't put something, I can't put something, I can't put something, something on, on masks. masks. The coming weeks. The coming weeks. But what I will but say, what I will say for that really quickly, quickly is that is um, that um their own is, is not where, 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 where i come where i come from for every for every for every event, for every event for every important for every important we wear masks, 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 masks right right um, so for me, so for masks masks are an amazing an amazing and powerful and powerful thing, thing because i come from a culture where we celebrate them and appreciate them in the world, in the world uh, i will say i will say that women are forced to wear masks but but as the time as the time continues they can learn the math of the math learns how learns how to perfect devices devices so a mask, a is, mask an is an accessory it depends on how it depends on how you use it it depends on it depends on the power the power that you have as you use as you use and so i want to and so i want to see that very firmly um, but also um, but also the masks were very i wanted i wanted people i wanted a chance i wanted a chance for people to see those african and to and to revel and revel and the even though initially they're negative but like let's see how the story goes and see more about the mask uh, I love that they're like 
powers of that they become like a beautiful symbol of power depending on how you use it. That's a, I, oh, that's such I, an amazing. That's, 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 that's the first chapter. chapter. I learned about, learned about <laughs> that one real, that one real rich thing. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I just wanted to give a shout out to the mask because that was another thing I knew that was just one of the many amazing elements of this book. And once again, thank you so very much to all the amazing readers for joining us. Don't forget, you can. We saw lots of love for making this a number one bestseller. And you know, I'm totally supporting that initiative. So if you would like to, you can click the buy book button down below and you can even get a personalized book plate. And I mean, it makes a great gift for any time of the year. So I'm just throwing that out there for you. And then I wanna thank you once again so much, Kim, so much to Namina. And I am excited because next month our YA book club is going to be reading this book. So if you want to get to discuss this book with even more fellow readers, join us next month because we will be discussing the Gilded Ones. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We're going to go ahead and sign out. Everyone have an amazing night, and we will see you next time. Bye. Happy Bye, book everyone. birthday. Thank you for, Thank joining. You for joining. Bye. Bye.